Hi, I'm Chris from SQL for Automation. In this video, I'm going to talk about the SQL for Automation connector and how you can configure and use it. Also, as an example, we're going to connect it to a Microsoft Access database. Now, if you've watched our first tutorial, you should have already installed the connector. If not, please do that first. You can click on this link if you don't know how. Now with SQL for Automation you get three programs, the config tool, the debugger and the query tool. The config tool is used to configure the connector and set up your connections. With the debugger you can debug and with the query tool you can simulate the controller. This way you can check if the connection is working or try out any requests. Now the connector itself is a service which runs in the background and you can find it by pressing your Windows key, typing in services and pressing enter. Now click anywhere in the list, type S, and you should be able to find it somewhere. And now connector starts automatically when you start up your computer. If however the service isn't running for some reason, you can start it with this button. So let's check out our config tool. The config tool can be divided in three main sections. On the left you will find a list with all the connections or so-called links you have created. And here you can set up your connection to the connector service. And finally here you will find the details to any link you select on the left side. You see the connected target, the database that's being accessed, and the last request to that link or any error messages. Now to use our config tool we first have to connect it to a connector service. So our tool needs to know where our service is running. Now in my case it's on the same machine, so I can just choose localhost. If however you are connecting to a service on a different device, you need to select the IP address of that device. To create a new one, go to host, click add, enter a name and the address and click OK. Now select your host and connect. My config tool is now connected to this service. Now to create our first link, we click on New. In here you will find three main sections. In the first section we want to define where and what our target is. Now unless you are using one of these controllers here, you can choose Standard. Next will be the IP of our controller. With the setting first, our connector will automatically assign the first device that connects to it as our target. Now in the next section we tell our link where we want to connect. In most cases you will be fine when you select this port for your first link and just increment the port by one for each new link. This way every link gets its own connection. And then our last entry is the database. Now to connect to my sample database here I first need to create an ODBC system data source. And you can do that by clicking here, system DSN, add and selecting the correct driver. Now I need a Microsoft Access driver, but I don't have it here, so I first need to install it. Now to download the driver we can go to our web browser and type in something like Microsoft Access ODBC driver 64 bit and this should bring us to this website. Now you can also download this from other sites and you should also get it installed automatically with the retail version of Microsoft Access or Office but I'm going to use this one. Now after installing we can set up our data source. Go to ODBC admin, click system DSN add and select the Microsoft Access driver. Now just add a name and select your database and then click OK. Now because I just installed a new driver, I'm going to restart my config tool, reconnect it, create my new link and that should have the data source. Click OK and we're done. Now with this LED here, we can check the status of our link. And there are six different colors. Purple, the license is missing. Red, the link is not ready. Green, the link is ready. Blue, the link is active and connected. Yellow, the link has an error. And gray, the link is disabled or trying to connect or disconnect. 
So because our LED is purple, we know that we need a license. Now we can either buy the product or we can go to license, activate test license, and we will get a license which works for the next two hours. After these two hours, we can just do it again. And as you see, our link turned green and we are ready to connect. Now we just do a test and it worked. All right, so our next step would be to connect a controller to our link or use the query tool. And we will do that in our next tutorial. If this video was helpful, please leave a like. And if you have any questions, just write them in the comments below or go to our website. You'll also find other videos on our channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.